In this video, we're going to take a look at primitive objects. Maya has three different types of primitives that we can access through the Create menu. We have NURBS, Polygon, and Volume. Let's first create a NURBS primitive object, and I'm going to create a sphere. And when I do so, it asks me to drag on the grid. So if I left click anywhere on that grid and drag out, my NURBS sphere is then created. When I let go of the left mouse button, the creation is complete. Now, primitive objects all come with a creation node. This is right here in the inputs in our channel box. And I can click on that creation node and modify the components that go into making this particular object. So for instance, if we wanted to add more sections to our object, I can click the word sections and then middle mouse and drag in the viewport to increase or decrease the amount of sections. And spans will give it in the opposite direction. Now these only work for this particular object. And in this case, sections and spans is something that is specific to a NURBS surface. Now NURBS stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines. NURBS are approximated surfaces, meaning that their components, or what we actually see, is not the actual surface. For instance, if I hit F8 and go into my component mode for this particular object, you can see that the points themselves do not actually sit on the surface. They're actually a little bit away from the surface. And if I were to grab one and just move it out, see that it actually pulls even further away from it. This is because this surface is just an approximation. It is not what the actual surface is going to look like. It's pretty close. If we render this out, we'll actually take the surface, it'll be converted to triangles, and we'll see it in its true form. And it will match pretty much what we see here in the viewport. NURBS surfaces are not used a whole lot anymore since it's very difficult to make a complex surface out of them. There's lots of restrictions that we have to deal with when working with a NURBS surface. So our preferred method is to use polygons. We'll delete that out of there and go back to create, go to polygon primitives, and I'll create a polygon object. Before I do so, I've turned off interactive creation. This will automatically then create the object. So if I choose cube, the object is created. I do not have to draw it out on the grid. This ensures that the object is created at zero in my world. I kind of prefer that. Now polygon objects are more of what you see is what you get. And the components on our polygon object do not sit off the surface and they're located directly on the surface. And if I were to move that point, everything comes with it. So it's far more predictable. And we'll go back to our object mode. Now polygon objects can be made of n-sided faces, meaning that they can be a triangle, a quadrangle, having four sides, or even higher, having five, six, or seven. N-sided being any number of sides. So for instance here, if I were to right mouse click and go to my polygon marking menu and choose face, when I click on a face, you can see that that highlighted face there has four sides meaning that this is in quads, and all of the different faces here all have four sides. Polygons are the most versatile of our objects inside of Maya, as we can take a single object like this, like our cube here, and make it into a very complex object by simply adding more faces to it, or more geometry to it. We can add or take away geometry at any level of our surface. We also have the greatest amount of tools for working with polygon objects. Now embedded into our polygon object is the ability to create another type of primitive surface called a subdivision surface. To access this, I'm going to go into my attribute editor of my object itself. 
and let's copy that tab so we can see this a little more clearly. And under the Smooth Mesh Rollout, we have an option here for Smooth Mesh Preview. If I press 3 on the keyboard, it'll also activate this. And now it takes that cube and smooths it. And here we can see that we're using the global subdivision method. If we uncheck that, we're using the open subdiv by Catmull Clark. And this gives us a very nice subdivision surface. Now we can also choose to display the different subdivisions, and I'm just going to toggle back to the global subdivision method there. And I'm going to turn those subdivisions off. And we can take a look here where we can change the amount of divisions that we see on our object. So if I want to get back to that cube, I can just change that to zero division levels. If you want to smooth it even higher, we can go out to a four or even type in a value and change that cube into a sphere. And now when I right click and go into a component mode, and let's increase this a little bit, you can see that it acts somewhat like that NURBS surface. My manipulator is actually sitting off of the surface. This manipulator here is right where this vertex was back when it was a cube. And I'll lower this down and you can see, boom, there it is. It lines right back up. But if I increase that smoothness level, now it becomes a bit more approximated. So this type of smoothing or subdivision surface is a hybrid of NURBS features as well as polygon features. The great part about this is that at any point in time, we'll just return this back to a level two and just close that, is that I can toggle between a polygon surface and a sub D surface by hitting one or three on the keyboard. And so I can work with it at any one of those levels. My last primitive, let's delete this, go to create, is the volume primitive. And with a volume primitive, let's just create one, what we get is called an implicit surface. What this means is that I cannot change any of the components that make this surface up. I could scale and rotate and move it around, but I can never go down to a vertex level and manipulate those components individually to change the shape of this surface. Now we don't really use volume primitives for modeling, but we can use them to create fog effects or even specific light type effects.